Peggy Goo is about to release a brand new album. Peggy Goo is about to release a brand new album called I Hear You. The funny thing about this, I have such weird main character syndrome. I'm such a fucking, you know, um, undiagnosed narcissist. I thought the title of the album had something to do with me. I thought for all the videos and all the commentary I've done on Peggy Goo over the years, I thought she said, I hear you. Like, hey, Agassino, I hear all the shit you've been talking. I hear all that rah rah thing you say on your pod about me and about my weird accent and all this stuff. And I'm coming. I'm coming, Agassino. I thought this the title of the album was something to do with me. That's how much of a fucking psycho I am. Obviously not. But still, it's coming out on June 7th of, on XL Recordings. Um, I'm assuming the album title has something to do with all the negative um, press and attention she gets online. People questioning her artistry, questioning whether or not she's a plant, questioning whether or not she's a Nepo baby, questioning her background, questioning whether or not she has a ghost producer, all this malarkey. So I'm assuming these mirrors um, around her ears is basically her saying she hears all the negative is she hears everything you've been saying just listen to his album so most likely his album would be i'll imagine taste wise sonically especially considering <clears throat> the singles are all over the place that she's recently dropped from um it goes na 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 and lenny kravitz i believe in love again and obviously the new one which is one plus one equals eleven i think this album's going to be like a showcase of her skills She's like, look, I hear you. I hear all the naysayers. I hear you guys doubting my talent, doubting my fucking, you know, place in the dance music industry. And I think this is going to be a compilation of some of the best, of some of her taste. So it's going to be everything from trance, drum and bass, house, techno-ish sounding things, EDM, disco, um, you know, dance, I tell her dance side records. I think it's going to be a, across the board. That's my theory. I don't think it's going to be one genre. I think she's going to display her musical talents throughout. And I've also got a feeling, this is a weird thing I'm going to throw out here. I don't know why I think this, but just something I'm just thinking. I have a feeling she's going to put out some sort of content or video of her making a track from the beginning to the end. Because that's one of the things that's always been labeled at her, right? That she's a ghost producer. Because you think about, um, what's that legendary track that she had? What's a legendary track that Peggy Goo had back in the day that was super, I think it's Starry Night, I think if I'm thinking of, right? People basically say that the fall off from Starry Night and a few of the other records that she put out is proof that she didn't really produce that track. So Starry Night was made by a ghost producer and the other stuff that she's done has been her, which is why the quality of it hasn't been as good. I don't think that's the case. I just think sometimes you hit a lick. Sometimes when you get into music, the first thing that you make or the first major release that you put out that's got some backing and promotion behind it just takes off. It's not your fault. Do you know what I mean? It kind of is what it is. So maybe that stuff is what kind of happened when it came to her. So, the, you know, the earliest stuff that she put out dropped. People fucking loved it. And it ended up being, you know, pretty amazing for her. So people excuse her being having ghost producers. So I have a feeling this is a, a rumor without no regard and me just kind of shooting the shit here. She's going to put out some type of video where it kind of proves undeniably that she's the one that makes the records, where she crafts a song from the beginning. You see her, you know, laying down some of the early beats and bass lines and melodies and then slowly building up into a track itself. That's my feeling going forward. Again, I could be wrong, but that's my feeling. Um, so far from the singles that have dropped, the best one is definitely 1 plus 1 equals 11, followed by maybe Na Na Na. Na 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 I fucking hate. It's so annoying, but it also is kind of good. It's a weird record. Like it doesn't, it probably doesn't, it doesn't have a good shelf life, right? It's not something you want to hear again and again. I haven't, really, I haven't really even heard any good remixes of it, but decent enough. The I Believe in Love Again track with Lenny Kravitz, I don't get this. I'd love to know what the what the connection with her and Lenny Kravitz is. Did she bump into him at her Muay Thai gym? Did Do they, you know, were they in Bottega buying the same fucking leather pants? Were they fucking before? I don't know. Or did they bump each Like, what the deal is that? Because that, that track was so weird, so random, and so shit. Um, you can hardly hear Lenny Kravitz in it. And when he does come into it, he sounds horrendous. Like, I don't know. It's a really bad song. Um, but I feel like the 1 plus 1 equals 11 is really fucking good, especially the beatless version. Um, it's very trancey kind of record kind of in trend with what everyone's kind of listening to at the moment 
Um, you know, it's very, uh, it's, it's what you describe as a quintessential big room record. I think it's going to go off in festivals. It's going to go off in drum sheds and all those kind of 5,000 capacity soulless venues, which is going to be good, I guess, for her in terms of, you know, earning some money on streams and shit and just getting your name out there. Um, but I'm eager to see what else she has on there. I'm eager to see if there's going to be like an R&B record or something, right? Or like a really cool synth pop record. But I have a feeling she's going to really go and kind of prove the doubt was wrong and have a compilation of all these different sounds on the album now the only negative will be that it might be so good people will still question whether or not she did it you know what i mean that's what might happen um let's continue here the quote from her says i hear you is more than just a debut album it embodies countless hours of dedication in my journey to create something timeless and is a testament to the power of listening to ourselves and each other that's an amazing paragraph that says nothing but uses a lot of words she's very good at like sounding like you know like a legit artist that you have to give peggy goo that that rating like she come you know she carries herself like a pro because that sounds amazing but i don't really know what that means you know but let's continue south african south african the south korean artist has typically stacked touring schedule in place in the coming months highlights include coachella so let's actually see where is she playing actually where is it oh it's got a track list as well there where is she actually playing is she booked and busy let's see peggy goo and ra is she booked and busy bloody hell she's not doing any small you can tell she's making bank in it because every flyer that's on here on ra on the ra page right ra.co um ra.co for slash dj for slash peggy you on one word it's all festivals massive flyers with like loads of tiny names on the first on the on the lineups no small club the only thing that's kind of small lineup wise is the thing that she's doing in gunnery park which is quite a good lineup to be fair it's a really random lineup but it's quite a good one um peggy goo 17th of august on saturday here in london in gunnery park special guests include mochak lsdxo sally c and hiver none of these people i've read mochak lsdxo sally c and hiver have anything in common apart from knowing how to use pioneer cdjs musically they're all completely different even with the way they look the way they dress their friends they're all completely different people so to have all these people in one lineup is fucking wild um so it's either going to be really good or it's going to be a fucking horror show but that's the only lineup i can see that's got you know a, a normal sized lineup everything else is like just hundreds of people so imagine all of these gigs like let's say her booking fee is like a hundred grand or like i don't know imagine she's gonna be making bank this summer and the album's dropping in between this time so the album drop it'll probably go number one and then it'll end up she'll end up getting way more dates on the back of that as well but she's doing a lot of dates in england actually so coachella on on the on friday the um, april 12th and um, then she's got edc the following month in las vegas then Primavera Sound in May. I wish I was going this year. One of my favorite festivals of all time. Primavera Sound. Oh, and Vampire Week. Oh, my God. The lineup of Primavera Sound is fucking incredible for a small flyer. Vampire Weekend, Charlie XCX, J. Paul, Deftones, Omar Apollo, Peggy Gilgoy, Troy Siva. Oh, my God. The lineup of, for fucking Primavera is absolutely amazing. Anyway, let me stop looking at that. Um, She's going to be at Primavera Sound. She's also going to be at We Love Green Festival in Paris. And then loads of England dates. Rockstar Energy Drink presents Park Life. Fucking hell, look at the name of these festivals. Rockstar and City. This is why people hate festivals, isn't it? The corporatization of festivals is fucking crazy. Um, Manchester, she's playing in Glastonbury, um, then back in London, then she's back playing Creamfields, then playing Emerge in Belfast. So a lot of UK dates, actually. But yeah, what's her booking fee? Probably like 100 grand. Let's see if everyone, anybody knows. What is Peggy Goo's booking fee? Peggy Goo booking fee. I'd imagine it's going to be like 100 grand or maybe is it or, or is it 10 grand oh really 30k this is oh, this is for something to do with beatport has got anything here anybody got any information of how much she charges any person here let's see no one's saying anything um booking uh book, pay you go, booking how i just see how much does peggy you book yeah, let's see. How much did you get paid? Two million. A DJ producer, a fashion icon, Peggy Goo has carved out a unique niche for herself. Oh, this is a list of it. The highest paid techno DJ. Let's see this. Via technoairlines.com. The highest pay She's not even techno, to be fair. I love how they just use the term techno just to describe electronic music, but she's definitely not techno. She's probably more house than she is techno. Do you know what I mean? Makes no sense here. So let's see here. Um, the, oh, shit. The number one net worth dj is carl cox 16 million sven vice 40 right i didn't know he was that high up 
Sven Vaar is like, he's actually done pretty well in that. Yes, he's obviously super commercial, but he's also kind of remained. He's also he's, he's still got a bit of that underground appreciation. I feel like if he was to pop up at like a smaller venue and play, people would be hyped to see him. Like if he played at Panorama Bar or something or Bergheim, people people would want to see him play. Do you know what I mean? I don't think he's I don't think he's that lame as other people. Like he's not. You know what I mean. Like a Marcel Dietman, I think maybe has probably lost it because he's probably doing a lot too many of these type of things. But I don't know. Amelia Lenz to be on there, considering how young she is, is fucking phenomenal too, by the way. She's number three, 10 million net worth. And she's way younger than Carl Cox and Sven Vaz, So that's fucking crazy. She'd probably be their daughter. Deborah DeLuca, the one that everyone hates with the big lips, she's on there. Adam Bayer, who I despise, he's on there. Nina Kravitz, 2.5, Peggy Goof, 2. There's a lot of women on this list, isn't it? They say, oh, there's not a lot of women in DJing. But of the 10 here with the highest net worth, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 are women. That's really good. It's come a long way, to be fair. It's come a long way. Let's be honest. Yes, a lot of them are the same old names, but it's still pretty encouraging, to be fair. It's still pretty encouraging. So big up Peggy Goo on that regard. Let's check her fucking Instagram. What's she been up to lately? What's this? What's what's big pegs have been up to? Obviously, just looking fabulous and wearing all the. She's always got the latest best shit in it. Look at this picture with the fucking latest patter. I think that's the patter jacket, right? The varsity jacket that um patter did. I think LeBron James wore it recently. Is it patter? Yeah, it is patter. Look at that. The latest patter jacket. Of course, she's got that straight. She gets. She must get the best seating. Her seating must be fucking incredible. Incredible, like full fucking DJ setup in her in her house. I love this. This is actually quite cool. I love how that her DJ booth setup in her house is like the decks are there inside this nice little cube design thing, and then it's mirrored. Might be a bit weird looking at itself, but it's quite cool. I like how it's mirrored because that's something I've always been annoyed by when I have my decks at home. It's like it's facing a wall. Yet it's just a MIDI player, but it's just like a wall. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, the mirror thing is quite cool. I quite like that. Um, yeah, just living life in it lovely you can no wonder daniel wang was upset about her isn't it? and was kind of jealous because daniel wang has been in the industry for so long he's such a respected amazing dj and then to be like you know asian as well to think there's some solidarity between you guys she moves into the same building as you she then lives at the top floor allegedly and then her apartment looks like this fucking hell like you know what i mean she's got literal handlers taking up her shopping upstairs she doesn't even carry things she doesn't even carry her own headphones probably right probably has somebody with a little pouch a little patter dj bag that brings her headphones and a usb to her while she's about to play life of peggy goo must be so good man it must be so good look at the house it's so fucking lovely is that futura little finger at the back there oh no it's not it's a scorpion i thought she had a little random futura thing okay cool there we go and then what's the other picture too? There's a I see a guy here. Is, is this like a boyfriend or something? Who's 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 this guy? Oh that oh that's Olo. Oh that's the guy that did the collaboration. Okay, cool. And it's matching jackets too. So yeah, she's doing she's doing she's doing way for herself as you can see. How many followers? Four point one million. Just living life, man. Just you know, lo amazing clothes, great location. Out here hanging out with fucking Son from Tottenham, Korean pride there. Nice to see. Fuck me. What a fucking life. Let's see some video. Let's see. Let's see. What, what's the video where she... Look at that crowd. What, what crowd has she played in front of there? In Argentina, Buenos Aires. Cool, man. Cool, isn't it? Cool. What's the fee, I'm thinking? What would she get? I'm thinking 100 cat because I think the last time I checked, I think Solomon was getting... In that article for The Atlantic, it said he was getting somewhere around 100K. I think that was for like a season though when he first started. I wonder if she's able to break 100K per booking. That's wild, but that might be online. Maybe it's 100k per booking. That's incredible. I, I love the setup, all the screens around it, and all the artwork. That's a pretty cool um, experience. I think that's what you have to do if you're going to be a DJ that plays these big events, and you only play these massive, huge events. You know, ten thousand plus people, festivals, open air, and shit. You have to put on a bit of a show. Like you have to put on a nice audio visual com component that makes it worthwhile to kind of see you. The only thing I don't like, to be fair, and it's something that I have to give Burkheim a lot of credit for, I hate the stage culture shit. I hate all this stuff. I despise everyone standing around a booth. The only good thing they've done here, from what I can see, this is like a VIP section. So the VIP section is at the top. Um, the booth around her is, you're not allowed to go in there, but you can stand around. That's a VIP thing. Cool. But I think, in general, there should be a separation. If you're the DJ playing, you should be playing up there on your own. There should be no one else on stage there, apart from yourself and maybe your boyfriend or something. But there should be no one else. 
I don't like this whole thing. I think it's annoying and distracting. And, and if you're raving, it kind of takes away, it kind of distracts you. You're not paying attention to the rave because then you're seeing people, you know, oh, she's hot. Or oh, who's, that, who's that guy taking a bump? Do you know what I mean? It's really distracting. But um, I love this. That looks really cool. I'm not going to lie. That looks really fucking cool. More smoke, more sick stuff. What's the, what's the, what's the gene say? Rest and re, what's that? Rest and wreck routine. I don't know, something. I don't know what that says. I don't want to zoom into a bump too much. And then, of course, let's play a video and see what she plays when she's out recently. What's this one? What's this one about? Let's see. What's this one say? Look up, look up, look at F F K A M four A. He's definitely he knows where his bread's buttered. I think she did well there by bringing him in. I think she helped put you know put him on a few shows and boost his signal, which you don't see a lot of DJs do. I don't, I've always wondered that as well. I've kind of spoken about this on the pod sometimes as well. In the DJ world, it's not like hip hop and shit where people will put their arm around a DJ and kind of bring them in. It's always just like you know everyone for themselves so it's nice to see her basically extend her hand and use her fame to kind of prop up somebody else and now fka m4a is booked and busy and doing his own thing as well so congrats to them congrats to them eager to see the album when it eventually does drop um peggy goo um what you call it i hear you lp about to drop in june on june 7th and of course i'm definitely going to do a live reaction to this i'll probably do a live re album reaction to this on probably kick so if you haven't followed me already make sure you follow me on my kick my kick is should be kick.com forward slash agostino zingo so if you want to follow me on there do so because i'm definitely going to do a live reaction to that and play it in full on kick when that track on that lp eventually does drop so definitely make sure you follow me on kick for all of your music needs and shit you see it there on the profile i'll also put it in the link description if you want to check it out that's my fucking kick profile over there nice and easy nice and blood clot easy you know how it is you know how it is